You don't care about being a good person. You don't care about other people's well-being or making sure you don't hurt anyone. You might say you do, but you're just virtue signaling. If you really cared, you'd act. Act to help people, take a good look at yourself and change for the better. Of course, from the inside, you know how you feel. You know how much you tried, how this keeps you up at night, how much space this takes up inside your mind. Even if you have nothing to show for it, that's no grounds to dismiss your internal experience. If you tell me you care about something, in the sense that you feel really strongly about it, I believe you. Let P be a person and V be a value. The following are not equivalent. P feels very strongly about V. V occupies a lot of P's time and energy. P takes strategic action to maximize V. We define three notions of caring in terms of these three statements, where F stands for feelings, O stands for obsession, and A stands for action. Claim. For all X and Y in the set containing F, O, and A, X caring does not imply Y caring. Proof. Let V be a value. It would suffice to show an instance of X caring without Y caring for all X and Y, but will in fact construct the lattice of all caring combinations. The bottom element is the archetypal non-carer who doesn't care about V in any sense. They don't F care or O care. They're not bothered and won't bother. Furthermore, they don't A care. For instance, if V equals strawberry ice cream, they will not act to acquire and consume strawberry ice cream. This seems similar to not bothering, which is surely a consequence of not being bothered, so it all seems incredibly redundant, and thus many would accuse you of being this person if you don't A care. Intuition suggests you don't O care or F care either. However, there is a distinction to be made here. O doesn't F care or A care about V, but nevertheless ends up occupying themselves with V for a large chunk of their time. They certainly bother with V quite a bit in this sense. Maybe they're just curious about it as a theoretical thing with no personal relevance to their life. Or maybe they're depressed and find it hard to care about anything, which often means both finding it hard to feel strongly or passionately about anything and finding it hard to muster the willpower to do anything. However, this doesn't prevent them from spending hours and days ruminating on V, turning it around over and over in their mind, thinking about how to muster the willpower to act, fantasizing about that eventuality, much like... Unlike the oppressive O, who may be ashamed with themselves for not caring as much as they should, F.O. is desperate rather than listless. They spend a great deal of mental and emotional energy agonizing over what to do, because it's the only thing they know how. They must do something. Therefore, they must continue thinking about it if there's even a slightest chance a solution would come to them. For instance, if V equals learning category theory, F.O. would stare at a textbook, thinking about what's written. A monad is a monoid in the category of endofunctors. A monad is a monoid in the category of endofunctors. A monad is a monoid in the category of endofunctors. In the hopes that if they concentrate on it long enough and put in enough effort, it will somehow occur to them what it means for a monad to be a monoid in the category of endofunctors. They fail to break the problem down, not because it's too much effort they're not willing to put in, but because they don't know where to even begin. Alternately, they may feel hopeless. Even if they're offered a solution, they're convinced it wouldn't work. But they can't bring themselves to stop desperately obsessing regardless, because it will feel like they're abandoning the cause. It will feel like they've stopped caring. Keeping V in their hearts and never forgetting about it feels like a sign of respect, even if it does nothing to concretely advance V. There seems to be a pipeline here from desperate FO to hopeless FO to listless O as one runs out of energy to F care. But if you're lucky, you might be spared the obsession and find yourself to be... If someone feels really strongly about V, how can one possibly not think about it a lot? Well, denial and motivated reasoning. For example, suppose V equals one's child. F, F cares about their child. The idea of their child in pain really upsets them. So when their child tells them they're in pain, F convinces themselves they're just being dramatic, attention-seeking, going through a phase. They're fine. F's dismissiveness is directly caused by their F caring for their child. An emotionally uninvolved outsider, like a counsellor or a random internet stranger, often has an easier time listening to the child and facing their painful emotions head on. Now for the exact opposite side of the coin. OA might help people because of abstract principles, without empathising viscerally with their plight. They might not F care about the exact issue, but F care about the abstract principle, and feel guilty about only rationally knowing the exact issue is an issue on an abstract level. 
For instance, OA may call out their friends on bigoted behaviour and get them to stop because they were told by marginalised people that the behaviour is hurtful and know rationally they have little reason to lie, but cannot at all relate to what's so hurtful about the behaviour and would personally not be phased at all if they were called a slur or misgendered or hear a joke stereotyping their culture. To some degree, OA might see the helpies as fungible, as sites of utilon maximisation rather than unique individuals. OA might feel bad about having this kind of patronising or objectifying mindset as well. Alternately, they could just be someone looking for a challenge or doing this for fun or out of self-interest, who doesn't f care about the abstract principle either. Now, how does someone A care without even O caring? Here's the crux of why these distinctions matter. Suppose V equals mispronouncing your name. Perhaps you've met someone who keeps mispronouncing your name, no matter how many times they're corrected and reminded otherwise. Do you start to suspect they're doing it on purpose? Well, in my opinion, most of the time they don't F care, or O care about mispronouncing your name. Unless they do get defensive or upset when told to stop, in which case they do F care about pronouncing your name their way as well, for whatever reason. FA doesn't think about your name's pronunciation in their day-to-day -day life. They may start O-caring when challenged and it becomes strategically necessary to put in a matching level of energy and effort to fight those who challenge them. Unlike A, who would be more likely to just stop A-caring if they're truly met with enough force to shake them out of their natural inertia. And finally, there's FOA, the archetypal carer. The one who really cares, who isn't helping for ulterior motives or conversely pretending to care without actually doing anything to help. The conspiratorial evildoer with a vested interest in messing with or exploiting you and consciously decides to do so. Now there's also the related concept of X wanting, X intending and X trying. In the interest of time, we'll illustrate these via examples. Let P be a person. If P has a fetish for people dying and finds it hot, then P F wants people to die. If P chooses to fantasize about people dying, perhaps reading fix or porn depicting the fetish, then P O wants people to die. If P will be glad to see a real person die, hoping it will happen, and will watch rather than help them, then P A wants people to die. If P spent a lot of mental energy mustering the willpower to finish their homework today, while seeing no other course of action with greater chance of success, then P O intended and O tried to finish their homework today. Let alpha be the expected likelihood of P getting their homework done today, using the method of highest likelihood they know about. Let beta be the expected likelihood of P getting their homework done today by exploring alternate methods P is currently unaware of. If alpha is less than 0.5 and P chooses to explore alternate methods despite beta being even lower, as they refuse to settle for less than 50% chance, then P A intended and A tried to finish their homework today. The lattices of all type combinations for X-caring, X-intending and X-trying are left as exercises for the reader.